Turn with us tonight, if you will, to the book of Psalms. The Lord seemed to be so gracious this morning in the book of Psalms, I thought I'd just stay in Psalms for the night. Psalms chapter 61. Psalm 61. I do care with your prayers tonight that the Lord will help us to be a blessing. <clears throat> I appreciate this good crowd back tonight on this holiday weekend. That was a good uh, Sunday night crowd considering it is a holiday weekend. And I trust the Lord will use his word tonight to be a blessing to you that have come to be here. Let's bow for a moment of prayer and then we're going to read from verse number one. Father in heaven as we bow once again in your presence tonight. I thank you for the good service thus far and the good spirit. And I pray now the same Holy Spirit that has been upon the singing Lord will be upon me as your servant as I stand here to preach. Lord, I'm conscious of my need of thee. I pray you'll touch us physically and spiritually and you'll enable us tonight to preach and to be a blessing to those that are here. I pray you'll bless the invitation and the furtherance of the service tonight and we'll give you praise for all that is accomplished because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. In Psalms chapter 61, this was a psalm of David and the circumstances of this psalm was written at a time when David was in exile from his own son, Absalom. You remember there was a time in the life of David when his own son rebelled against him, tried to steal away the hearts of the people from following David to get them to follow him, tried to steal away the kingdom from him. I mentioned this morning, I don't think there's anything that is any more heartbreaking than uh, for a parent to be at the place that he cannot be proud of his children or vice versa that a, that a child reaches the place he cannot be proud of his parents. And here David certainly was going through a time of trouble and sorrow in his life at the rebellion of his son Absalom. And these are the words that he had to say unto the Lord. He said, Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings, Selah. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. This psalm opens with sorrow and with an earnest cry unto God for help. This psalm closes in verse number 8 with singing. I will sing praises unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. For a few moments tonight, I want to preach when God turns sorrow into singing. When God turns sorrow into singing, I'm glad tonight that our sorrow is not permanent. The trials that we have, Paul described them as being but for a moment. And those trials that we have are working for us, he said, a far more eternal weight of glory. Here the psalmist gives us some things tonight that I think we can identify with in our daily walk with the Lord. Many times we as Christians are met with sorrow and disappointment. We're met with trials and troubles that come our way. I was looking back uh, this afternoon as I studied and pondered on these verses of Scripture. And I was thinking about as I looked back through some of the sermon notes that I have 
since I've been the pastor here at Floyd Road Baptist Church. And to my surprise, much of the preaching that I've done these eight years have addressed sorrows and trials and times of trouble in the life of a Christian. Much of my preaching in these eight years has been addressed at that. I begin to think back over some of the heartaches and the troubles that I know that has took place in the lives of many of the members here at Floyd Road Baptist Church in these past eight years. I thought about briefly some of my own heartaches and sorrows in these last eight years. But I also, as I look back over those times, I can remember not only in my own life, but in the lives of many others that I've been acquainted with your sorrow and your trials and your troubles, that I've seen the Lord turn that sorrow into singing. And I'm grateful tonight that the scripture said, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Aren't you glad there's a morning of joy at the end of that night of weeping? Here David began to describe some things, and I want us to look at some things tonight. Look in verse number one, and we see David's cry to the person of God. David said, hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. Here in verse number one, as he cries to the person of God, David asked God for two things. He said, Lord, I want you to hear me. But then he said, I want you to help me. He said, hear my cry, O God. And then he said, attend unto my prayer. Now that word attend is a word of action. He said, Lord, I want you to hear my cry, but I want you to attend unto my cry, unto my prayer. I want you not only to hear me, but I want you to help me. That word attend is a word of action. Now my mother, when I was a little boy growing up, she never did put that A on the front of that word. But, but I remember her at times when I was sitting in church when she'd look over at me and whisper in my ear and say, if you don't behave yourself, I'm going to tend to you when I get you home. And she didn't put that A-T on the front of that, attend to you. She just said, I'm going to tend to you. Now that meant action. That's a word of action. You know what David is praying? Now, that is humorous because many of us, is, we've been there. You know, you can so easily identify what I'm talking about. But, but I didn't just say that to be funny because this word attend is a word of action. And David said, Lord, I want you to hear my cry, but I want you to, to attend to my prayer. I want you to take action on my behalf. And Lord, I want you to help me in this situation that I'm in. We go on to read in verse number two and we see the problem presented before the Lord. He said, from the end of the earth, from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. Have you ever been to the place where you just felt like you was at the ends of the earth? In other words, David had reached the place that he felt like he was at the dropping off place. He was at the ends of of the earth and he said from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee he said when my heart is overwhelmed you ever been to the ends of the earth and your heart seemingly is overwhelmed within you the trials and the circumstances and the sorrow that you find yourself in seemingly has just overwhelmed your heart well, David could identify with that. David could identify with that. He said, from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. We see the problem presented before the Lord as David cried out to God. But then look at the prayer prayed. Look at those next two words. He said, lead me. Lord, I'm at the ends of the earth. My heart is overwhelmed and I don't know which way to turn. I don't know which way to go. Lord, I want you to lead me. Lead me. And then notice the place he petitioned the Lord for. He said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lord, it appears that I'm sinking. 
It appears that I'm falling. I'm at the ends of the earth. I'm at the dropping off place. It seems as though there's nothing solid to stand on. My heart is overwhelmed within me. I don't know which way to go. I can't turn to the right or the left. Lord, you have to lead me. And I want you to lead me, Lord, to that rock that is higher than I. I want to tell you tonight, it doesn't take very much trouble and very much heartache and sorrow for you and I to find ourselves in the sinking sand. But aren't you glad there's a rock? Paul described that rock as the Lord Jesus. And he said, Lord, I want you to lead me to that rock that is higher than I. Lord, something I can't do for myself. I want you to lead me to that rock that is higher than I. That old song, the rock of ages, is taken from these verses of scripture right here. I was thinking about this today. These, these verses lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for thou hast been a shelter for me. Who knows what the songwriter was thinking about when God led his heart to this verse of scripture and inspired in his heart the words to that song. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for thou hast been a shelter for me. Well, David cried unto the person of God. But I want you to look in verse three with me for a moment. And I want you to see the confidence that David had in the power of God. We not only see his cry to the person of God, but we see his confidence in the power of God. He said, for thou hast been, past tense. He began to remember. He began to remember and he said, for thou hast been my shelter. Thou hast been a shelter for me. Lord, you have been my shelter in times past. You have been my refuge in times past. David began to remember that. And then he said, for thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. David said, Lord, you not only have been my shelter in the past, but you have also been my strength in the past. You have been my strong tower. Lord, you have been my strength in the past. I wanna ask you something tonight. Those of you that may be facing heartache and trial, I wanna ask you something. Have you forgotten where your shelter was at the last time? Have you forgotten where your strength was at the last time? Have you forgotten who sheltered you in that time of storm in the past? Have you forgotten who gave you strength that you knew nothing about that would cause you to pick one foot up and set it down in front of the other one when you didn't think that you could take another step? Well, I want to tell you, David's confidence was in the power of God when he began to remember. And sometimes when I'm overwhelmed with the present, I can think back in the past and I can remember that God has been my shelter. I can remember that God has been my strength. I can remember that God God has brought me through times of trouble that I didn't think I'd ever make it through. And I want to tell you tonight, when your heart is overwhelmed with sorrow, there can be a day of singing if you would but stop and place your confidence in the power of God and remember what he's been to you in the past. You see, every time God appeared in the Old Testament, he always addressed himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And what God was saying to those whom he addressed in that matter was, what I have been to them, I can be to you. What I have been in the past, I can be to you. You remember when Moses died? That great leader Moses died. The Bible said when he was dead, the Lord appeared unto Joshua and here's the words that the Lord said to Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. What I've been in the past, I can still be in the present. I want to tell you, if your heart is overwhelmed within you tonight, the Lord can still be your strength and he can still be your shelter. We see David's confidence in the power of God. Don't forget what the Lord's been to you in the past. Don't be so overwhelmed. Have you ever been so overwhelmed with, with the present that you, it, that you couldn't see what God has done in the past? Oh, listen, God 
is the same today. God can still be your shelter. He can still be your strength. Now notice, when David began, when David began to confess his confidence in the power of God, then we see his commitment to the presence of God. Now notice this, verse 4. He said, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings, Selah. That word Selah means, wait a minute, think about this for a moment. It means a pause. Now, I'm not a musician, but they tell me that that word Selah in these psalms means the same thing. Some of you folks that know music know what it means to rest. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about, so y'all nod at me if you know what I'm talking about. When you, when you see something, it means to rest. Well, they claim this word Selah means the same thing. You see, these psalms were songs, and when they put that word Selah in there, it means rest. Hold this. Hold this thought. Meditate on this. And listen, if you're going through time of trouble tonight, you need to rest for a moment on this. You need to hold this thought for a moment. Because here's what David said. He said, now that I've been reminded of my confidence in the past in his power, that he's been my shelter and he's been my strong tower, he said, I'm not about to go anywhere. I'm just going to abide. And he said, I will abide in thy tabernacle. I wonder why it is that when people get in trouble, the first thing they want to do is stay out of church. You ever notice that? First thing they want to do is stay out of church. And that's exactly where they ought to be. David said, I'm at the ends of the earth. My heart is overwhelmed within me. I find nothing solid to stand on. I'm praying and pleading with God to lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And he said, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to abide in thy tabernacle. He said, I'm going to abide in thy tabernacle. And then he said, I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Now, for this to really mean what it should mean to us, you've got to get the picture of what David, what does David mean when he says, I will abide in thy tabernacle and I will trust in the covert of thy wings. David had a picture in his mind of that mercy seat. You see that mercy seat in the Old Testament in that tabernacle? He said, I'm going to stay in, the tabern in thy tabernacle. And that mercy seat, on, on each end of that mercy seat was two cherubims. And the scripture said the cherubims had their wings spread out over that mercy seat. And the Lord said, that's the place I'm going to meet with you. Let me turn over here and just read this for a moment. This has got a New Testament counterpart for you and I that I'm going to mention in a moment. But back over here in the book of Exodus, if you want to hold your place here in Psalms and just turn back to the left to the second book of the Bible, Exodus Chapter 25. And here's the instructions that the Lord gave Moses about this mercy seat and the ark and so forth. And he said in verse 17, And thou shalt make a mercy seat. I'm in Exodus 25, verse 17. Thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubic and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten work shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat and make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall you make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims shall stretch forth, here it is, and the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings. And their faces shall look one to the other Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be. Thou shalt put the mercy seat above the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony of all the things which I give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. The Lord said... These two cherubims shall stretch forth their wings and cover that mercy seat. And he said, between them two cherubims on, on, to that, on that mercy seat is where I'm going to commune with man. 
And you know what David was saying in this time of trouble in his life? He is saying, I'm not going to flee. I'm not going to run anywhere. I'm going to abide in his tabernacle. And I'm going to trust in the covert of our wings. In other words, I'm going to stay in that place where I can commune with you. Are you listening? I'm going to stay in that very place where I, can know, where I know that I can commune with you. I want to tell you, if there's ever a time in your life that you need to stay where you can commune with God, it is when you're in a time of sorrow and heartache and trouble. That's no time to leave God. That's no time to stay away from the church. That's no time to forsake the Lord. But if there's ever a time you ought to stay in that place where you can commune with the Lord and trust in that place of communion, it is when you are in the time of trouble. You know what that mercy seat is to you and I? That mercy seat is the cross for you and I. It is like staying at the foot of the cross. It is like abiding at the foot of the cross because there is where we first saw the light and it it is at the foot of the cross where we continue to see the light. It is at the cross where we commune with God. The cross The blood of the Lord Jesus on that mercy seat is our place of communion with the Lord. You and I ought to stay at the cross and plead the blood during those times of heartaches and trouble. David's commitment to the presence of God when he realized and reflected back on the past and said, I remember that thou hast been my shelter and thou hast been my strong tower. He said, I'm going to stay put. I'm going to abide in thy tabernacle and I'm going to trust in the covert. I'm going to trust in the covering of thy wings. I'm going to stay at that mercy seat where I can commune with God. My challenge to you tonight is stay in that place where you can commune with the Lord. Stay at the foot of the cross. Stay at the mercy seat. Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now let's notice something else. When David made that commitment to the presence of God, and he said, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the cover of thy wings, Selah. He said, for thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. David began to confess to the performance of God. What did David ask for at the beginning? He asked for the Lord to hear him, And he asked for the Lord to help him. He asked to be heard and he asked to be helped. You know what the Lord did? Down in verse number five, this is what David confessed. For thou, O God, hast heard me. That's number one. He asked to be heard and he he began to confess. For thou, O God, hast heard me. He asked to be helped. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear Thy name. Now, what did David need help with? What was Absalom trying to do to David? He's trying to kill him. His life was threatened. That's what Absalom wanted to do. He wanted to, he wanted to destroy David in order that he might steal away the kingdom. And David said, Lord, I need to be heard and I need to be helped. Well, He was helped. He said, Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. And you know what the heritage of those that fear the Lord is? Hold your place right here. We're in the book of Psalms. Just turn to the right, one book, to the book of Proverbs, chapter 14. Proverbs 14. And here is the heritage of those that fear the Lord. Now bear in mind, the threat to David's life was death and destruction. But David feared the Lord. The Bible said in in Proverbs 14 and verse 26, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. That's those that fear the Lord. And David said, I have the heritage of those that fear the Lord. Now look in verse 26 or in verse 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of, of life to depart from the snares of death. 
the threat David was facing was death. And he said, the Lord has heard me and he has given me the heritage of those that fear the Lord. And those that fear the Lord has a fountain of life. You, you do know that life is the opposite of death, don't you? <laughs> God gave him the heritage of those that fear the Lord. In other words, his life was being threatened. He was facing the threat of death. And the Lord gave him a fountain of life. And the Bible said to depart from the snares of death. That's exactly what David was facing. The snares of death that Absalom was setting for him to try to destroy his life. And he said, he has heard me. He began to confess that. He has heard me and he has helped me. He got the two things that he asked for. Verse number 8. We see his continuance to praise God. He said, so, so, he has heard me, he has helped me. Now, are you just going to take those blessings, David, after you've been to the ends of the earth and your heart's been overwhelmed within you and you don't know which way to turn, you've pleaded with God to lead you to the rock that is higher than I and he's heard you and he's helped you. Now are you just going to sit there and not say anything about it? No. But because of the Lord hearing him and helping him, he said, So will I sing praise unto thy name forever. Do you know that every once in a while, every once in a while, far less then we hear a request being made. We'll hear somebody say, I have a prayer of praise. I have a word of praise. And they share with us about God answering their prayers. Well, that's what David is doing right here. He said, God's heard me and God's helped me. And I'm not going to be quiet about that. I'm going to sing his praises. Amen. I mean, you talk about, <laughs> you talk about singing his praises. David said, why? He, he's heard me and he's helped me and I'm not going to be quiet about that. I'm going to sing his praises. He said, I'm going to sing his praises. I will sing praise unto thy name forever. I will praise him with a song and then look at the latter part of that verse. I will also praise him with service. He said that I may daily perform my vows. Now look that word perform up. I think I pretty much know what perform means on the surface. But I'm glad I went to the trouble to look that word perform up. And that word perform means to pay in full. And so here's what David is saying. He said, because, because the Lord has heard me, because he has helped me, I'm going to praise him with a song. I'm going to sing his praises. And I'm going to praise him with my service. I'm going to pay in full my vows daily Amen. under the Lord. In essence, what he is saying is this. I'm going to give my all to the Lord. I'm going to give it everything I've got. You and I tonight, when we cry out to the Lord from our, from our circumstance of desperation, of sorrow and heartbreak, and we cry out unto God, and he hears us and helps us, we ought to in turn give him our all and pay our vows unto the Lord daily. We ought to sing his praises and serve him to the fullest with everything that we have. He's worthy. Now, I know you can't, you can't pay the Lord back for what he's done for you. No way in the world you can ever repay the Lord for what he's done, but you can give him your all. You can serve him to the fullest of your ability. And that's what David was saying. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Won't live up to my end of this day. Amen. Amen. You know the Bible said it's better not to make a vow unto the Lord than it is to make one break it. Now you know how most people reply to that?
Notice that little word vows on the end of it. God, you've lived up to your end. You've heard me and you've helped me. And now I'm going to pay my vows to you. I'm going to live up to my end of this deal. Amen? You know the Bible said it's better not to make a vow in the Lord than it is to make one break it. Now you know how most people reply to that? Most people read that verse of Scripture and say, well, you know, the Bible says it's better not to make a vow in the Lord than, than to make one and break it. So they just won't make one. Amen? And somehow or other, we feel good about that. <laughs> we, we, huh? Is that not so? That's the way we, into, we read that verse of Scripture and, and, and that's the way we respond to it. It's better not to make a vow than it is to make one and break it. And so we're just not going to make one. But how can we not give him our all when he's done so much for us? Uh, when he hears us and helps us day by day through our difficult situations and through our storms and trials, how can we not give him our all and pay our vows under the Lord? Well, every head's bowed and every eye closed. That's the message tonight. And I believe with all my heart that I've been obedient to the Lord this morning in the message that I shared out of Psalm 61. And I'm just as convinced tonight in my heart that I've been obedient to the Lord and I've shared what the Lord wanted me to share tonight. How the Lord turned sorrow into singing. Your situation may be full of sorrow now, but the Lord can give you a song that cause you to sing His praises and to perform your vows unto the Lord. Don't quit on the Lord. Don't, don't run out from the Lord. Abide in his tabernacle. Trust in the covered of his wings. Stay at that place where you can commune with the Lord. And the sun's going to shine again. There's going to be a morning of joy following that night of sorrow if you will just abide in his tabernacle and trust in the covered of his wings. I wonder just before I pray tonight if there might be somebody here, say, Preacher, the Lord spoke to my heart in the message tonight. I, I needed, I needed what you shared from the Word of God tonight. I need your prayers. Pray for me. Would you slip up a hand? God bless you. God bless you. <coughs> Several hands going up tonight. God bless you. Anyone else? While well, I wait just a moment. Now I realize, God bless you. Anyone else? I realize the message I preached tonight has been addressed to Christians, but I wonder... Just before I pray, if there might be a person in this building that say, Preacher, if I were to die right where I sit tonight, I have no hope of heaven. I've never been saved. I've never come to Jesus. Please remember me in prayer that I'd be saved before it's too late. Anywhere in this building, they just slip up a hand. By that lifted hand, say, Pray for me. I'm not saved. Anywhere? Father, thank you tonight for your never-changing word. I thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word tonight that can be spiritual food to our lives when we're weak and torn. And I pray tonight that the things that we've shared has been what somebody needed to hear. To give them strength for the journey. Maybe to face the heartache, to make their burden a little lighter. And I pray for every hand that was raised tonight. Lord, you know the circumstances, you know the situation represented by every lifted hand in this place tonight. And I pray that you'll meet the need. And I pray you'll give victory in each and every situation in a way, Lord, that would bring honor and glory to your own self. Blessing this invitation, help people to be obedient to you. And Lord, should there be one in our midst tonight that has never come to know Jesus as their personal Savior, may this be the night they come and trust him. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.